Welcome back. A new and upcoming docu-series seeks to educate viewers about the Bronx by taking a deeper look into New York City's most underrated borough. Let's check out the short trailer. My name is Shay Marie G and I am a Bronx girl. The Bronx nurtured me and this is a place where I learned the importance of home. So when I hear of all the negative things people have to say about the Bronx, I take it personally. I get offended off the rip. But then I realize people don't get what the Bronx has to offer from universities, historical landmarks, and the impact it has on NYC's economic foundation. And this is why I decided to get a group of Bronx enthusiasts together and produce The X. The X is a TV show that explores all the beautiful things about the Bronx. Let's give the Bronx's flowers today. And this is why we need you. With every donation, we'll be able to pay for production, licensing, and if we hit our highest goals, we'll be able to incorporate community development. We will take a deeper look into the Bronx's neighborhoods, cultures, and shine a light on all the hidden gems that lie beneath the concrete of the Bronx, New York. Our goal is to reveal the Bronx's history. Whether you're from New York or a person who admires this beautiful city from afar, the Bronx has value and its story needs to be told. So please help us make history as the first show by the Bronx and for the Bronx. Help us produce the X. I couldn't agree more. The Bronx gets a bad rep and this show is trying to distinguish that. So joining us now to share more about the X docuseries about the Bronx, our creator and host, Shay Marie G and director, Vega Montañez. Welcome to you both and congratulations on such an incredible project. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Of course. I'm so glad you said my name so right. That was amazing. Montañez. I haven't been in a while. <laughs> this is a primo. He's probably Dominican. I got to say it right. <laughs> so Super without Dominican. further ado, please share more about your doc, um, the docuseries, The X. Oh my gosh, the, the X is so necessary. So I was so tired of hearing nothing but negative things about the Bronx. Like they spit it on the news and even in New York culture, you tell somebody you're from the Bronx and they automatically like, oh, the Bronx. And I wanted to change that narrative. So I'm like, I have to create something to change this. And that's when I decided to create the X. Awesome. It sounds amazing. And I definitely can, you know, kind of empathize with that, with that same feeling. I've been working in the Bronx for the past like four years, but when I was working outside of it, that was always the thing, like a stereotype because I'm from the Bronx. What do you do over there? You get on the train and you, you go past uh, one, 161 or whatever, like, you know, once you hit 149, like you're from, you're, you're yeah. in the Bronx. But I want to learn more about your roles um, on the docuseries and where you're both from in the Bronx, if you can share. Okay, so I'm born and raised in the South Bronx, Soundview section of the Bronx. Um, I now live in Pelham Bay, and I am the creator and director, and I've been tapping into my writing skills as well. Dope, dope. Um, and I work as director and producer, making sure everything uh, comes together the way it needs to, and all the shots look good, the story's great. Um, I am on the west side of the Bronx, on by University, by the George Washington Bridge, um, you know, all the hills and all that. Uh, and I spent half of my life in Providence, Rhode Island, which is out of state. Um, so that's kind of where my attachment is, where you know, I, I was born and raised here in the Bronx, spent some time in Providence. And this is still where I call home whenever you know I'm, I'm on the East Coast primarily. So I hear that. I hear that. So Shay, as the creator and producer, why was it personal and important for you to highlight the beauty, light and history of the Bronx? I feel like it's important for our culture and it's important for our children to know that they're from a place of value. I know that as a child, people used to say, oh, you're a Bronx girl. And I know that affects people and it affects, affects everyone, honestly. So I really, really wanted to give something of value and of quality to show people that, yo, there's so many amazing things that they just don't know about. So they, when they talk about the Bronx, they can talk about the Bronx with pride. Word, I hear that too. <laughs> <laughs> go yeah, ahead, go ahead. And to, and to piggyback on that is like when Shay presented the idea to me, I sat back and thought about it. And there aren't a lot of documentaries that highlight these deeper stories in any of the boroughs, right? So I was like, what better place to pick than the Bronx? You know, what's recognized as like the the most what has most one of the most impoverished, you know, areas in the country, let alone the state, right? So like there's a lot of, of information and interesting stuff to talk about that hasn't really had the opportunity to shine or be highlighted because some things about the Bronx history are overlooked in, in the media. 
Absolutely. And, you know, we did see a trailer just now. We saw some amazing drone shots that you shot, um, Vega, and, and some of those other shots that you had. Um, what made you come on board as a director of this project? And how are you shooting the Bronx in order to show this beauty? What is your your angle as a cinematographer? Um, so, like I said, the biggest thing that brought me on board was simply that that whole dynamic. You know, if you we're in 2021 and, and literally if you go back, you know, 30 years or 40 years at this point, you know, the Bronx looked like a war zone. There were buildings that weren't even finished being put up yet. You know, so there's just a lot of information there that I think is really interesting to get out to people. Um, and then as far as the the overall direction, the biggest focus that we have is on community development. So we are really highlighting the local businesses, the impact of, of big business coming to small to, to small areas and how that affects things. You know, um, quick uh, quick tease into the first episode, but we talk a lot about the Joker stairs, right? And the actual impact that that version of tourism had on the Bronx, right? Because people were coming in here and creating all this massive traffic jam and, and making it impossible for people to walk by. But then they were still too scared to go into the bodega and buy something or go into the local restaurant to buy something. So all that money was still making its way into Manhattan. You know, so little things like that. Shay and I are over here shaking our heads like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, you know what he's talking about because he's talking about production, <laughs> so but I am cool. right so there with you. Yes, they weren't going into the bodegas to help out. And the bodega owners themselves even had these concerns. You know, when this film came into the the um, the scene, came to the Bronx, and there were location scouts and everything, it makes me wonder, like, you know, how do they even find these spots? And who do they inquire with to come into exactly. our community? Over a billion dollars was revenue for that film, and zero percent of it was put back into the Bronx. Zero percent of it was put back into those the upkeep of those stairs. And it's 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 very sad. It's very sad. So you gave us a little bit of a sneak peek on what people can expect to learn on episode one. It's a deep dive into the Joker stairs and the Joker film. Can you give us a little bit more without giving too much away? <laughs> oh, that's tough. Okay. So we're gonna be digging deep into movies that were shot in the Bronx mm -hmm. and um going to those neighborhoods and, and and talking about those movies and talking about the impact that uh those productions have had or lack of uh to the Bronx, New York. Heard it, heard it. Thank you. Thank you for being safe with the answer too, not trying yeah. to give too much away. They gotta wait for episode <laughs> one to come out. <laughs> So what what do you think are the culprits of the Bronx? How and why do you think the Bronx has gotten a bad rap over the, the past couple of years or decades? Really? I'll say as somebody who left and came back, one of the biggest things that I find is, you know, New Yorkers have a reputation for having a certain aggressiveness to us. Mm -hmm. um, but the Bronx is a huge example of that. Right. And, and if you think about what people who have been in the Bronx for the past 50 years have really survived, it's hard to be upset about it, you know? Um, but I think that that really ties into it, along with the fact that the majority of the Bronx is still heavily, um, heavily like populated by minorities. You know, there's a very, you can kind of point out the small sections that are owned and operated by people who are not of color within the Bronx, as opposed to some of the other boroughs that are a little more well divided. You know? So I think that that makes a big impact on it. Exactly. And a lot of people don't know, like the people of color had to fight to live in the Bronx. You right. know, a lot of the, you know, or even to the 80s, it was all owned by Italians or all owned by the Irish. And, you know, they wouldn't rent to people of color. They wouldn't let people buy property. And we literally had to fight to be here. So now that we're here, you know, people are giving it like a negative kind of, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, no, 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 no. You need to really take a, a look and take a second to really appreciate the history to understand why things are the way that they are. Yes. So I'm guessing we're also going to be learning about redlining in the Bronx. You gave another hint there. <laughs> yes. there's, there's a lot of conversations that we have planned for the for the entirety of the first season, right? Where like all of our focus as far as everything that we've outlined so far, um, which is why it's critical to get these to get these funds and to get this support through Kickstarter, because not only does this help us with paying our staff and paying our team, but it also helps us acquire bigger opportunities and in interviews, you know? So with, with our first teaser episode, all of the dialogue and conversation around the Joker stairs is, is developed and, and created and researched by us, right? But it'd be great if we had the resources to be able to go out and say, hey, let's talk directly to somebody from Warner Brothers Studio and, and have, this, have them address this directly, right? Maybe they have a different side of the story that we don't know about or we don't understand yet. And 
kind of having those big opportunities present themselves for us and getting the rights and permits to access certain places we want to tell stories about, that's really what the Kickstarter is going to be helping get to. Right. Yeah. Shay, if you want to elaborate a little more on the Kickstarter campaign, I was definitely going to ask about that next. Um, what will you need help with moving forward? How many episodes have you gotten under your under your belt so far? And, and what will you need? Um, We're currently your- writing uh, episode three. Um, we shot the Kickstarter and we shot episode one. So thank God we were able to have funds for that. But for right now, like like Vega just said, our main goal is to get the funding so that we're able to pay the staff and able to get the licensings to get the things that we need to get. Um, there are also like rewards with the Kickstarter. So there will be partnership opportunities for small businesses to come in and join the team so that they can actually gain from the production as well. Not only from a standpoint of being able to have recognition, but also being able to financially you know, benefit from the production as well. Yeah. Where can people support your project and find out more about the X? So so the Kickstarter right now is uh, launched on Kickstarter. So you can just click the link on our Kickstarter. You can go to our Instagram page and you can actually go to the Kickstarter right there. And our email is there. And we're also looking for people to join the team. If anyone who is a Bronx enthusiast who wants to come, we are open and welcome. We have a team of amazing writers that are so amazing and they're all Bronx all from the Bronx, everyone's from the Bronx. And um, we're just looking to develop our team. Yes, Bronx Bride. Love to see it, love to hear it. Thank you both so much for joining us. And that Instagram page is the X underscore TV show. You can follow them there and find out more about their uh, Kickstarter campaign and docu-series coming soon to the Bronx. Thank you both so much for your time today and for sharing more. Awesome, thank you for having us. No problem. So that's all for our show today. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, wishing you and yours safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.